What is going on everybody, Soliday Holiday here, back with another Kenshi mod video. As of recently, there have been a large amount of new and interesting mods that the creators in the Steam Workshop have released for Kenshi, and today we're going to be checking out 9 of those mods that you need to know about. That being said, if you like this video, go ahead and do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button, it truly does help me out, and if for some reason you like my horrible commentary, hit that big red subscribe button. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video for the biggest and best mod of the list and let me know down in the comments what your favorite mod of this video is. That being said, let's go ahead and get on with the list. Our first mod of the day is number 9, Lost in the Ashlands, and it's actually brought to you by Boron. This is one of the most popular mods in the Kenshi Workshop at the moment and for very good reason. This mod makes it so that the factions in the game will actually have wars with one another. No longer will the major factions just sit around and hate each other for no reason and do nothing about it, right? They will actually go out and fight their enemy nations in the game. One of the awesome parts of this mod is that it also adds unique and dynamic quests and adds new and involved starts. In my opinion, this is exactly what Kenshi needed. Some of the new game starts include a pit fighter, an inmate, a betrayed outlaw, and a fugitive. If those new starts weren't good enough for you, each of these starts comes with its own quest line. When it comes to the faction wars, the United Cities, the Shek Kingdom, and the Holy Nation are going ham on one another throughout the Kenshiverse. These factions will actually send out raids to try and take out their enemies, and the contrary to that is that the factions will send out defense parties and reinforcements to attempt to stop these raids. Each faction has a unique group of generals that get chosen at the start of every game, and they will actually vary in the different playthroughs that you have. Each general has their own personality and make different decisions based on those personalities. You can join the Sheik or the United Cities as a mercenary if you so decide and you can attempt to help their war effort. The more that you get involved in those wars, the faster they progress and the faction leaders and the generals are actually crucial to the war effort. So if you happen to take out a general or a faction leader, it has the possibility to cripple that nation. This mod is one that will without a doubt spice up your gameplay and add even more for you to do. The mod creator actually has many plans for the future and is going to continually update this mod, so there's even more to come. Mod numero 8 is the Fast Travel Machine WIP. This is a mod created by Ika Hurula that allows you to create a machine that will allow you to fast travel to the different places throughout the Kinshiverse. This machine has an unlimited range and you can buy the blueprint at just 50,000 cats in different adventure shops. To research this machine, you have to have at least a level 4 research bench, and this makes it so that way you're not placing fast travel machines all across the Kenshi map at level 1, right? To research this machine, you'll have to have 4 iron plates, a generator core, a power core, and a CPU unit. So while not crazy expensive, it's not exactly cheap. This machine acts as if a cage, and it actually works best if you have someone nearby to put your character into it. This is a unique mod, and I've yet to see anything close to this, so I just couldn't help but to put it in here. Number 7 is a simple mod, but one that could truly make a difference out in the world if you use it correctly. It takes a whopping one research book to research it, and it's called Panic Room, New Building by Camel Spider. What this mod does is it allows you to create a small room that you can huddle in, out in the world without having to carry around a bunch of building materials to make a small shack or something like that, right? Once you have built the Panic Room, you can go inside, shut the door, and heal up from your last battle. Or, if you're fast enough, you can hide from your enemies in here. This could also be a great building to start out your own base with. This is a small mod, but it has the potential to be very effective if you use it wisely. Modification number six is New Town Market, and it's by Yana Lenik. This mod adds not only a new city called Market, but it also adds a new faction called the Marketers. Very creative, I know, right? But the city is located in the Skinner's Rome, and they have a couple of outposts throughout the world. The faction included in this mod are a lot like the Wandering Traders faction, if you know what I'm talking about. And one of the unique and different things about this mod is that the city is supposed to act as a hub for the trading in the Kenshi world. Throughout the city, you're going to find merchants from every race and every faction out in the Kenshi world. Some of the comments on this page say this mod is a little too much because you have access to anything and everything in the game here, but in my opinion, it is without a doubt worth exploring. In this new city, you're going to find more than 30 different buildings and all of the juicy loot you could ever imagine. Are you tired of enemies being unconscious for forever, or having a 1000 plus second recovery coma timer? Maybe you just want to finish the fight as soon as possible to make sure that the enemies don't get up to fight again. I can't tell you how many times I've been done with a fight only to have one of my characters get knocked out by an enemy that I thought was down but had gotten up after recovering a little bit. That is what mod number 5 helps with. I happily give you finisher feature mod by Solver Mantis. This mod actually puts a skull in the enemy's inventory and if you loot this skull it will effectively kill them and allow you to continue on your adventures without worry. This mod does not apply to boss enemies or important characters so you will not accidentally kill a character with a huge bounty. 
but this is a small quality of life mod that could change everything for you. The next mod is another simple but effective mod that could completely change the game for you. I give you mod number four, buy any building. This mod does exactly what it says it does. It allows you to buy any building in cities and even some buildings that are randomly out in the world. Say you go to war with the holy nation, right? And you've cleared out the entirety of the base. Take that settlement as your own and buy all the buildings. This could allow for a lot of replayability or just allow you to take over the world if you want to. Mod number three is a mod that we've actually already covered on this channel, but I decided to cover it again because I did not feel like I did it justice the first time. I personally had this mod downloaded since I first put mods on Kenshi, and I give you Idle Training Nutrient Bath added. This mod is in addition to the training that is available in the game. It adds all different kinds of training equipment for your characters. It has everything from a weight bench to train your strength to a machine that allows you to train your character's perception. There are two different levels that come with this mod, Primitive and Advanced. Once you reach tech level 2, you will be able to access primitive training. Once you've researched primitive training, you will be able to build a treadmill which will level up your athletics, a punching bag which will allow you to level up your dexterity, a primitive bench press which will allow you to train up your strength, and a sparring mat which will allow you to level up your martial arts skill. Once you advance to tech level 3, you will be able to research advanced training which will actually unlock a K64 unit that allows you to level up your perception. You will be able to build an advanced bench press. And finally, a shooting range that allows you to train your crossbow skill. This mod is great, especially for in-game players. It allows you to train the skills of new characters without constantly having to micromanage them. This mod was created by Vampire Teddy Graham. <laughs> mod number two is a mod that I'm extremely excited to feature, and it's called Play as Bad Guys, now with major factions. If you are looking for a complete overhaul or just a completely new experience in Kenshi, then this mod is without a doubt for you. Have you ever wanted to play as the Holy Lord Phoenix of the Holy Nation? How about Emperor Tengu of the United Cities? Maybe the Cannibal Grand Wizard? You can with this mod. You can even play as freaking Catlon. Say for instance you want to play as the Holy Lord Phoenix, right? What you can do is you can start a new game and you will spawn in as the Phoenix himself. You can then buy almost any building in the faction capital. You can go and recruit pretty much any person from that faction. Then if you want to, you can go on a freaking warpath. This mod allows you to play the game in a completely different way and gives an interesting twist to the game we have yet to see. The game itself already has a lot of replayability, but this mod gives it even more. You can play as the Holy Lord Phoenix, Emperor Tengu, a set of the Stone Golem, Dead Hive, Southern Hive Queen, Mad Catlon, Bugmaster, King Gurgler, Savant, the Cannibal Grand Wizard, or Tenfist. The mod creator, Nacho Problem, is still updating and adding people to the list today. Our last but not least mod, number one, and probably the craziest and biggest mod on this list, Kenshi, Age of Blood and Sand Mod Pack by Krav. This is not a single mod, but instead it is a mod pack with 300 different mods put into it. The mod creator has gone through all the mods to allow them to be compatible with one another. This mod adds everything from different hairstyles to huge new monsters you have to fight. It adds all different types of animals and small factions. About a month or so ago, I started to kind of lose my drive to play Kenshi. But this mod pack is what brought back all the excitement that I had on my first playthrough. It's the reason why I didn't upload for about a month or two, right? Most of the mods in this mod pack are small mods, such as Guards for the Hub, right? But then it also has major mods like the Guild of Surgeons or the Hydra that puts an in-game Hydra monster that roams the southern land of the Bonefields. It even completely changes the way that you use and find research books. There's too much information to pack into a small portion of a video for this mod pack, but for me, this is a necessity. It truly changes the game and allows you to experience Kenshi in a whole new manner. And for you veteran players out there, this mod pack makes the game a little bit more difficult. That being said, if you guys like the video, go ahead and like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you want to see my Kenshi tips and tricks series, should be right there. If you want to see my mod series, should be right there. Follow me on social media, all that fun stuff. Those will be down in the description. See you guys on the next one.